Section 8.7, Exceptions to the Octet Rule. Uh, there are three classes of exceptions to the octet rule. Almost all um, compounds obey the octet rule, but there are some that just don't work, and trying to force an octet on it only makes for headaches. The first obvious one is if there are um, an odd number of electrons. If there's an odd number of electrons, you can't make all of them have eight. It just doesn't work. So in, in cases where there is odd ones, you're just going to have um, a breakage of that rule. It's no big deal. The second one is even more obvious. If you have less than eight valence electrons in the whole compound, then you're not going to get eight. You're not even going to get eight all the way across, let alone eight in each. So if you, if you have especially beryllium and boron, which is like uh, uh, groups two and three, Sometimes compounds of beryllium and boron just will not have uh, a octet rule, even if you could somehow uh, configure it. Um, it's just going to be, it's just not going to work. And then the largest class is going to be if you have very large central atoms, so something bigger than the third row. Because remember, the, any third period atom is going to have um, S's, uh, an S orbital, three P orbitals, and five D orbitals that they can stash electrons in. And, and most, of, most of the ones in group five are going to have some unfilled D orbitals, you know, empty rooms that they could put an electron in. And if it's big enough, uh, the electrons can kind of get out of the way of other electrons. And so a valence shell is not 100% necessary if you have very, very large central atoms. So we'll look at each one of these. So the first obvious one is if you have an odd number. If you have an odd number, um, you're just going to not have an octet. So in the case here, I've got nitrogen, nitrogen oxide. Um, nitrogen has five. Uh, oxygen has six valence electrons. That's 11 valence electrons. So you can't make um, then both have eight if you have an odd number like that. So one, you're either going to have one or the other, where the, the, the missing one's going to be on the nitrogen and the missing one's going to be in the oxygen. Now, this type of a, a molecule is going to be reactive because it's got, a, it's got a place for an electron to be, and since it does, it normally will react with some, something that has a spare electron to lend. Fewer than eight electrons are going to be the most obvious, that you can't have something, if you don't have eight electrons to distribute, you're not going to have the octet rule met. So beryllium uh, trifluoride is a good example here. Uh, boron is in group three, so there would be three electron, three valence electrons. Uh, fluorine in group seven has seven. So if it shares one with each, so if I were to have a boron and I'm sharing with fluoride, sharing with fluoride, sharing with fluoride, and these guys have seven. When it shares with boron, fluoride's going to have the octet rule made, but we've run out of electrons, and there isn't any more. So this is two, four, six. The boron has six. It doesn't have eight. You could connive and make a resonance structure here with double bonds to the fluorine, Problem is that the double bonds, the, the fluorine is the most electronegative element. It will take that electron to itself, and it's not going to share two electrons. It's not going to force two electrons um, sharing those electrons. They want those electrons. They're very electronegative, very greedy for electrons. So they're not going to share a double bond. Fluorine's not going to share a double bond under, under any normal conditions. So... You can't, you know, if you're going to break one rule or the other, in this case, you'll break the octet rule, and it, it's okay. Here's a weird molecule, phosphorus pentachloride. And you're, the problem is you would look and say, pentachloride, why are you trying to shove five chlorines onto something? If the octet rule seals you off at eight, then you should only put four. There should be two, four, six, eight and you should just have PCL4. Well, PCL4 does exist. You can make PCL4, 
but in reality, you can also see PCL5. There's actually, it actually exists. Well, if it exists, you have to explain, well, what's going on to make it exist? And what you see is that if you, okay, if you realize, all right, I've got PCL5, it's actually here. What's it look like? What's its structure? The only way you can do a Lewis structure is to crowd more than eight electrons around the phosphorus. You'll have 10 here. But when you think about it, phosphorus is in the third uh, row. And as the third row, um, you know, imagine concentric circles, you're getting bigger and bigger areas that you can put electrons there. Also in the third row, in third period, you have some unfilled D electrons. You've got, you've got five empty rooms of D electrons that are not being used when you get as far as phosphorus because you're going to fill the S's first, you're going to fill, fill the D's or the P's next, then you're going to go into the fourth shell and fill two S's and then start filling the three D's. So you've got all those D rooms open that you can stash an electron in. So it does work. So, but you want, the way it would work only is if you have a central atom that's big, you need at least the third row for it to happen. Um, and if you have the third row and you have a nice big thing and lots of room and you see that it actually exists, then yeah, just shove as many as you want in there. Five is not too many. You can even see six. Um, you'll, you'll see them in large, in large central atom molecules. If you were to write a Lewis structure for phosphate, this is PO4 minus three, and you can do it with an octet here, PO4, since it's four, you can do it with an octet. But when you do formal charges, and remember you, you're, you're looking at formal charges to where the valence electrons and what you see in the structure are very similar. You want formal charges to zeros if you can. Uh, they're very stable if you can make them zeros. Well, in the case here of making an octet, I've got a formal charge on the phosphorus of positive one. If I can make a double bond and give it more than eight electrons here, uh, shove more than eight pairs around the phosphorus, in, in fact, here you would have 10, it gives it a zero. It's probably better that you're gonna see, you're gonna see this structure because it reduces the formal charge, there's stresses on it, and since there's room, you know, it's there's open room, those electrons can kind of come in, and if it alleviates stresses, um, you'll see it that way in many times in these big, bigger um, compounds. So if you have atoms in the third row or below, like this phosphorus is in the third row, and expanding its octet eliminates some formal charge, then this is most likely what you're going to see. This would be the most preferable form, uh, even though it breaks the octet rule.